welcome to our today's lesson and um, our today's lesson is uh, about sketching the shear stress distribution for an I-beam section. Now the diagram below shows an I-beam section that's carrying a shearing force of a hundred kilo newtons. The beam um, have got a breadth of 200 millimeters and a total depth of 340 millimeters. It has a flange thickness of 20 millimeters. The depth of the web, this is the web, is 300 millimeters and its thickness is 10 millimeters. Now, for us to be able to plot the shearing stress distribution diagram, we need to calculate the shearing stresses at different uh, uh, sections of this I-beam. And um, we had already derived uh, the shearing stress uh, formulas at different sections of the beam. And we saw that the shearing stress at the top edge of the flange is zero. Then the shearing stress at the junction between the flange and the web, that is this section here, changes from, so shearing stress changes from S over 8i into d squared minus d squared and it changes from this to s over 8i times capital B divided by small b. Capital B is the breadth of the flange, small b is the breadth of the web into d squared minus d squared so we are going to use uh, those uh, two formulas to be able to get the change in shearing stress between the fringe and between the junction or, uh, of the fringe and the web the maximum shearing stress usually occurs at the web and it is given by s divided by 8i times small b into b into d squared minus d squared plus b d squared so that's the formula that's going to give us the maximum shearing stress. Now, the first thing we are going to do is to calculate the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. Now, for us to get the moment of inertia of this side beam section, we can treat the whole of it as a rectangle. So, if we drop a dotted lines in that form we are going to have a complete rectangle and we know that the moment of inertia of a rectangle is usually given by bd cubed all over 12 then we are going to subtract these two rectangles so we have the outer rectangle then we subtract these two uh, rectangles, that is the moment of inertia of these two rectangles. And that's going to, uh, or we are going to remain with the moment of inertia of this I-beam section. And therefore, we are going to have BD cubed over 12 minus BD cubed all over 12. We must find I so that we apply it in these three formulas that we got here. Now, um, the breadth is 200 millimeters. We can convert that to meters 
we know very well that uh, one meter is equivalent to a thousand millimeters. Therefore, with 200 millimeters, we got 0 0.2 meters. Multiplied by the total depth is 340 millimeters. Converting that to meters, uh, that's going to be 0 0.2 three four meters so the depth is cubed divide this by 12 minus the two rectangles we can treat it as one with a breadth of 200 minus 10 10 is the thickness of the web so that's going to give us 190 millimeters and uh, in meters that is 0 0.19 meters therefore we're going to have 0 0.19 times the depth of the of the web which is now going to be the depth of this rectangle is 300 millimeters which is 0 0.3 meters therefore times 0 0.3 cubed and then we divide that by 12 so when we carry out uh, that calculation, we are going to have 2.276 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 meters raised to 4. Therefore, that is the moment of inertia of this I-beam section about the neutral axis. Now, Applying the first uh, formula, we have shear stress is equals to S. S is the shearing force. So we have a shearing force of 100 kilonewtons. Therefore, we are going to have 100 divide this by 8 times. The moment of inertia is 2.27 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 into capital D that is the total depth of this I beam section which is 340 millimeters and in meters that is 0 0.34 meters therefore that is squared minus small d that is the depth of the web 300 millimeters in meters that is 0 0.3 meters so when we solve that we are going to have uh, 1405 kilo newtons per square meter so that is the first shearing stress and the junction between the fringe and the web now this shearing stress will change from s over 8i into d squared minus d squared to s over 8i times b over b into d squared minus d squared. So that's going to be 100 divided by 8 times i. That is the moment of inertia 2.27 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4, times B over B, capital B, 0 0.2, that is the breadth of the, of the flange, divided by small b, that is the thickness of the web, 10 millimeters, which is 0 0.01 meters, and then this one is going to be into, 0 0.34 squared minus 0 0.3 squared so again that's going to give us uh, 28,100 kilo newtons per square meter so the sharing stress between the junction uh, of the flange and the web that is at this uh, junction here is going to change from 14.05 kilonewtons per square meter to 28.100 kilonewtons per square meter maximum shearing stress 
Maximum shearing stress definitely it occurs at the neutral axis and that's going to be given by this formula that is S 100 kilonewtons the shearing force divided by 8 times I 2.27 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 multiplied by small b small b that is the breadth of the web 10 millimeters in meters 0 0.01 meters into capital b that is 0 0.2 meters into capital d 0 0.34 squared small d 0 0.3 squared plus small b 0 0.01 times small d 0 0.3 and then it is squared so that's how we calculate the maximum shearing stress that occurs at the neutral axis again when we carry out uh, that calculation it's going to give us 33,062 kilo newtons per square meter. Now that we have uh, all the stresses, we can now plot the shear stress distribution diagram. So we have uh, the stress at the top edge of the flange which is zero and then at the junction of the flange and the web shear stress changes from 14.05 kilo newtons per square meter and it changes to 28,100 kilo newtons per square meter the maximum shear, shear stress, maximum shearing stress, we got it as 33,062 kilonewtons per square meter. Now, our shear stress diagram is going to look like this. Is the neutral axis neutral axis there then we have the bottom flange and that one so we are going to have a, a straight line the shear stress at the top of the flange is zero then the shear stress at the, the first shear stress at the junction of the fringe and the web is 1405 so we are going to have a curve like that that is uh, the top fringe as well as the bottom since the top fringe and the bottom fringe have got similar dimensions therefore the diagram will still look the same and then the shear stress will change abruptly from 14.05 to 28,100 same case to the bottom fringe so that is an abrupt change of shear stress and then at the neutral axis we have the maximum shearing stress so this is now where we usually have a curve that looks like that very good so that is our shear stress distribution diagram now on our shear stress distribution diagram we have to include the stresses at all the levels now the shear stress here is zero we don't need to write it then the shear stress at this Point, the first shear stress at the junction between the flange and the web is 14.05 kilo newtons per square meter. 
then it changes abruptly all the way to 28,100 kilonewtons per square meter. The maximum shearing stress which occurs at the neutral axis is 33,062 kilo newtons per square meter. Again, at the bottom uh, flange, we got the same shearing stresses. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that's how we usually plot or sketch the shear stress distribution for an I-beam section. Thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe and also to hit the notification bell so that every, every time we upload a video, you'll be the first, first person to be notified. See you in our next lesson. Thank you.